morning everybody. Good morning. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We are
Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning, then I repented of my sins and won the Do you? 
go ahead and offer up a word of prayer over the offering this morning. Father God, we just thank you that we can gather together as your children through our faith in Jesus and bring forward this offering and every offering out of our lives. And we ask that you would bless them and multiply them around our community and around our world with the message of salvation through faith in your risen son, Jesus of Nazareth. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, on this beautiful spring green day out there, do we have any big announcements for this week? This month? This epic year of 2023 thus far? Hard to believe we're almost halfway through already. Smooth, quiet, slow, easy, drifting into summer week. Sounds good. Let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer for the message this morning, too. <clears throat> Father God, I do just thank you that we can gather as your children together to grow in our relationships with you and with each other and to grow in fellowship, Father. And I thank you for your Holy Spirit and all the marvelous work he does in each of our lives with our faith in your risen son, Jesus of Nazareth. And I ask Holy Spirit for you to speak your gospel through my lips to our open ears and hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so yeah, morning all. Morning. Good to see all of your smiling faces this morning. And uh, light and water are working beautifully out around us together, aren't they? All of a sudden, it's everywhere I drive this spring, it's like, oh, I'm in Ireland. I'm in Scotland all of a sudden. When did this happen? <laughs> it's green everywhere. And the pastures that driving around last fall, I thought, oh, you poor little things, will you ever come back to life? They're poof and knee deep and cattle everywhere. It almost seems like the cows in the pasture are smiling at me as I drive by. <laughs> it's fun to see the cows smiling and for spring to be finally upon us this year. And I believe that uh, along with each of us and along with the cows, most importantly, I believe Jesus is smiling on us. In Proverbs 16, verse 15, when the king smiles, there is life. His favor refreshes like a spring rain. Amen. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, Jesus of Nazareth, our risen Lord and Savior, when he gets one of these on, it's like a spring rain. And that refreshing, that green life, water of life flows into our lives around us. And the, uh, the prophet Jeremiah, studying and thinking about how can I help Jesus have a smile on his face? Just thinking about this, and I like the refreshing spring rain. And if Jesus' smile can be like a refreshing spring rain, how can I help there be a smile? How can I help our Lord and Savior do this? Jeremiah encourages me for that, I believe, in each one of us. In Jeremiah 17, verses 7 to 8. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. That's the kind of tree I would like to be myself, is a tree that never stops producing fruit. And that fruit of love and joy, and we'll look deeper into fruit as we get farther into the message but the idea that if I can stay attached to the water of life and feel the water of life flowing into my spirit and my soul I can keep a smile on my Lord's favor on my Lord's face and help him his the smile his smile help bring the water of life around us and uh, before Jesus ascended to be with the Father again after he was raised from the dead. He gave us a promise. He gave us the promise of the Holy Spirit, who is to be a part of our spiritual water of life. And in John 14, verses 15 to 17, If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, 
and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Jesus has promised to us of the Holy Spirit coming after his ascension to the Father. And the fact that that was applicable for all of them physically present, listening to him that day, and the fact that it's applicable for each and every one listening to him and his words today, sitting here, each one of us has the opportunity to have the Holy Spirit with us as a part, a living part of our relationship with God. And thinking about that, the personal relationship with God. God is our Heavenly Father. As a dad, I know I like to have a personal relationship with my children. And I believe the same applies for our Heavenly Father. He wants to have a personal relationship with each and every one of his children. He's done his part. Have I done my part for the day and for this time known as now? Am I taking time to make my personal relationship with God a priority in my life? And the third part of the Trinity of God, the Holy Spirit, is promised to be with me. Not only with me, but to live in me. And to, not only to be with you, but to live in you and be a part of you. And help guide us into all truth. It's kind of nice to have that idea of being led into all truth. I can remember being a guide out in Wyoming for elk hunters hunting. And their trust and faith as we rode out away from camp in the pitch black morning that their horse was going to follow my horse and we were going to get where we needed to go to find that elk and i need to have that faith and trust in god's holy spirit that he will lead and guide me to whatever path to achieve my goal of finding whatever elk i need to find for that day and the uh, the Holy Spirit is a promise for each of the family through faith in and confession of Jesus as Lord. In Ephesians 2, verse 22, In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. So we are being built together. It's a community effort. God wants to have a physical presence on this earth that he created. And each one of us has the opportunity to be the home for that presence. And that be, the phys be his physical presence on this earth. In the different capacities and abilities that he's given each one of us. Because as a family member, or you know, as part of a family, wherever I show up, a member of the, you know, for our physical family on earth, every place I go, a member of the Heinz family has been there. As Christians, believers in Christ, every place that each one of us goes, Jesus' family has been there. Jesus has been there and Jesus' Holy Spirit has been there. And uh, for help and assistance in the guidance with, for all family actions and affairs and things that need to deal with the family, if we keep going in John 14, verse 26, <clears throat> we're encouraged that, but when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. And that's a big one for me. Memory, memory and I are sometimes on a touch and go status with things. So having the promise that God's Holy Spirit will remind me of everything that Jesus has told me, what he's told me in his written word, but also what he's told me in the meditation time and times of prayer, and just communing with him in my personal relationship. The Holy Spirit can remind me when I need that spark and that, oh yeah, that little, ta, that light bulb moment where we're struggling with some issue or dealing with something in life, and all of a sudden, we have the light bulb answer for what we needed. The Holy Spirit has reminded us what we needed to know. And he reminds us of the truthful thoughts that we've had about him. And so 
Galatians 3, verse 14, encourages me on how to receive the Holy Spirit. Through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised to Abraham, so that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. So I can receive God's Holy Spirit through faith. It is just like the faith that I have that Jesus of Nazareth was crucified for every wrong I've ever done, laid in the grave, and rose three days later. I have faith that his Holy Spirit can be my guide and can provide me the reminders of everything that I need to enjoy righteousness. And thinking, thinking about righteousness and right standing with God. I would like to have right standing with God, which is how I define righteousness. In Galatians 5, verse 5, But we who live by the Spirit eagerly wait to receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. So I can remember that my right standing with God is totally by faith. It is by God's grace and love and my faith in his grace and love. All the good things that I can do, all the great actions and possible kind words I can speak, whatever they might be, aren't how I receive the Holy Spirit or how, how I receive righteousness and right standing with God. I receive right standing with God by faith and by trust in Jesus of Nazareth, cleansing and washing me pure in God's eyes. Jesus of Nazareth cleansed and watched each one of us in this room this morning pure in God's eyes with our faith in him and our trust and confession that he is Lord and Savior. He is the number one. And that, uh, that it is all by grace and by faith. And it keeps thanksgiving for righteousness. You know, right standing with God this is just coming as I'm pondering here, thinking about it. You know, to be in right standing and fellowship, relationship with the creator of everything. Can any one of us ask for anything more than that? Could I want or hope for anything greater than being in right standing with my creator who created me and each and every one of us and everything in the whole world? And not just on our tiny little earth, but everything in the whole universe? God created all of it, and he loved each one of us. I can look in the mirror and say, Dan Hines, the creator of everything, Yahweh, God, our Heavenly Father, loved you and loves you this much. And he does each and every day. And Jesus keeps me in that righteousness and that right standing with God. <clears throat> and righteousness enables the ability to be a home for God's Holy Spirit. Jesus promised us that he will be with you and be in you and live with you. And in Romans 8, verses 10 to 11, the Apostle Paul encourages us, and Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you and just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you now there is a promise that I want to hold on to okay I can trust that God is going to lead and guide and help my physical being be as restored as it needs to be at this moment but most importantly he's allowing my spirit to be alive and my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions. Remembering that Jesus' salvation isn't just for the physical body, but it's for my emotional body, and most importantly, my spiritual body. The me that will live forever. The you that will live forever. Jesus makes that part right with God, and that gains right standing. And it enables us to live and enjoy life and to be able to be comfortable with saying, when it comes to be that time, 
I'm ready to come home to you now, Father. Father God, I'm at peace. I've had a great life. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to live this physical life. My spirit is ready to come home and be with you when the time comes to lay aside this physical tent. You know, each one of us, this three-part being, the, the spirit who has a soul that lives in this body, eventually this physical body gets to be laid back to the ground and the spirit gets to go and be with God, the Heavenly Father, and enjoy that spiritual peace. Jesus promised peace that passes all understanding, and that's a great confidence to have as we go through life. And I can remember back through various times in the younger years and with the wild younger friends at different times, thinking, are you nuts? You want to jump off of this tallest cliff jump point recorded in the world, supposedly, at that time? And a few of us were like, yeah, this is something I want to add up to my list of, I've accomplished this and I've done this. And just that peace that, okay, no matter how this ends, I trust that there is God, the Heavenly Father, and that when I lay this tip, physical tent aside, I will be with him in heaven. I believe that there is a heaven. So yes, I'm going to enjoy this life and jump off of this big rock into this body of water I'm going to fly this airplane from here to there or ride this horse to accomplish whatever task it is. I'm going to try my hand at this new recipe. Some of you have that skill. I won't claim that one, but <laughs> I'm going to try the, my hand at this new recipe. And I trust and have faith that it is going to put one of these on everyone's face. And while we're in this tent of this physical body, <clears throat> I can be like that tree that we read about earlier, bearing fruit in all seasons. And to be a fruitful tree, thinking about what kind of, what kind of fruit am I going to produce if I'm being such a fruitful tree? Because I think each one of us is producing a harvest of some type. So what is a harvest that I can seek and look for? In Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Now that sounds like a fruit crop that I want to be able to have to back a giant semi up for. I mean, I want to have a giant amount of this fruit coming out of my life. That fun fruit of patience. Yep, there's another one. I need to have more water from the Holy Spirit to grow in and build. And uh, all of them, more love, more joy. It's always fun to see lots of these around, joyful smiles and, and peace. And that tough little fun last one, self-control, one of the greatest fruits I could ask for, self-control, and one of the fruits that's most needed, probably by yours truly and however each one of you feels about that for yourselves. I know self-control is one that I need God's Holy Spirit and his water of life to grow in me so that I'm not becoming the center of my own little universe but that I'm allowing God to be the center of my universe and Jesus to lead my thoughts, my words, and my actions, my life. The Apostle Paul encourages us to uh, take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. So am I doing that? Have I done that today? And I thank God that his Holy Spirit provides that water of life to when a thought drifts into my head. And a little sub, sub note here, subtitle. You know, every thought that comes into my head doesn't necessarily mean that I produced it. You know, our enemy might throw all kinds of little darts of thoughts into our head. The thoughts that are dangerous are the ones that come into my head and then stay there. And that I encourage and give life and water to by rolling them around in my head and thinking about them and meditating on them, pondering on them. How could this work? How could I make this work? Could this be possible? 
is this, do I stop and slow down to think, how does this align with God's truth for me? How does this action or this person, place, thing, whatever it is that has come into my mind, how does that align with Jesus' encouragement to love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love my neighbor as myself? <clears throat> So just thinking about and meditating on all these different types of fruit that God's Holy Spirit can bring forward in my life and in each one of our lives as we choose to allow it can allow more of the fruit to grow. Whatever I think on, whatever I speak on, the tongue has the power of life and death. What am I speaking? Am I speaking words of love and joy and peace and patience? Are my words kind? Are my words gentle? Do they give praise to God and faithfulness? So even with good fruit growing out of this tree and, and blossoming for each one of us, there, uh, and even with the Holy Spirit and the water of life present in our lives, is it possible for this tree or this, the root that I'm on, for me to drift off the wrong right, the right road, into a wrong route at some stages of the game. I have to confess that for yours up, truly up here, yours personally up here, yes, it is possible for me to make a misstep and to drift into the wrong path of thinking. And the wrong path of thinking will lead to the wrong path of speaking, doing, living my life in some way, shape, or form. And it might be something the rest of the world can see, and it might be something that only I see up here and know about up here and in here. So what happens in those moments when I may face times of struggle and difficulty in my walk in this life? There was a promise in Nahum chapter 1 verse 7 that jumped out at me and encouraged me for those times. He tells us, The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. He is close to those who trust in him. So I'm trusting in my Lord and Savior. Am I taking time to trust in him? Especially in those moments where I've made a misstep or a misthought, which led to a misword or a wrong action or living life in an unhealthy way. I have the option, each one of us has the option, to when God's Holy Spirit helps our conscience become aware of that, and realize, oh, yeah. By the way, BTW, daughter, son, that might not have been the healthiest action or word to have let come forth out of your life. I have the option to, oh, no big deal. I, it's not, a, not anything major. No lives were impacted by it, right? But I also have to look in the mirror and remember every word and action impacts at least one life, the one looking in the mirror. And when I look back at myself, how has that impacted me? Was it positive or was it negative? How has it impacted anyone else? Was it positive or was it negative? When it's negative, I have the option, and each one of us has the option, to take time to humble ourselves and realize and confess, Father God, I have sinned, and re repent and ask for his, thank him for his forgiveness through Jesus. So have I taken time today to do that? To ask God's Holy Spirit to enlighten my conscience of any wrong paths I've had in my thinking, speaking, acting, or living. And I can remember that when I humble myself and repent, the Lord is good and a strong refuge. He is close to those who trust in Him. With my action and my vocalization of repentance and talking to God and repenting to God. And personally, I found, you know, each one of us has to find what God's Holy Spirit tells our heart is right for that action of repentance, for that act, or that thought. But personally, repentance to God through another human being's ears has been helpful for me. It helps me to let go of whatever weight is on my shoulders to speak to God's ears through another human being's ears allow God to hear me through someone else's ears. And then, okay, it's out there in the world. 
And oh my goodness, the world didn't stop turning. Shocker, holy cow. Sometimes, I know personally there have been times where, oh my goodness, if all this doesn't go exactly the way that I've orchestrated it, the whole world might stop turning, it felt like. And guess what? I have yet to see the day grow longer or grow, grow shorter by any one of my words or actions. So I don't influence how the world turns. <laughs> Shocker. But I can humble myself and enjoy that repentance and the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit into repenting of anything wrong that I've done. And I will trust in Him, in the Holy Spirit, to receive the power that He can enable in my life and the power that He can enable in your life. In Acts 1, verse 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And I will have the power, and you can have the power, to know and realize and enjoy all the, the right things that we've done. The Holy Spirit can remind and encourage us, encourages us, eh, encourage us <laughs> in those moments where the shoulder feels droopy and oh, the day just isn't going good. Why does this day have to go so bad? Ugh. The Holy Spirit can remind that sparkle and that encouragement. Daughter, son, remember what you did? That smile that you helped that checkout person have? That person that you waved at walking down the street? Do you know how much that wave helped them get through the day? No, I personally don't know how much it helped them, but as long as I'm open to the God's spirit leading and guiding my kindness going to others and my love going to others, then as long as I'm the willing vessel, God is responsible and God will handle how that person interacts and reacts with that love. I'm just encouraged to be the vessel of love for him to travel through and live in and be a physical presence for someone else in this world to receive his love. And the power, one of the greatest powers that each one of us is given from the Holy Spirit, I believe, is the power to share the truth of the gospel, the good news about Jesus of Nazareth and what he's done. What has Jesus done for you? You have the power through God's Holy Spirit to share what Jesus has done for you with someone else. And it might not seem, you know, it might be a hard situation to open up with to somebody or might not feel like a big, big deal. Well, look at all the problems they've got or look at what they've got going on in their life. How could, he's help, how could him helping me in this way mean anything to them? And it's not my job to determine how it would help each person. I just need to be the willing voice to share this is how Jesus has helped me today. And he's helped me and he's shown his love to me in this way, shape, and form. And I encourage you to have your heart and mind open to receive how he loves you this day. In Romans 8, verse 16, we're encouraged. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. <coughs> what a blessing. Looking at a room full of God's children. Hi, family. And as God's children, His Spirit joining with our spirit, we can join together today and partake of communion. And partaking and receiving of the body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus of Nazareth. And the Apostle Paul encourages us to examine our hearts before we receive communion. So let's do that now as we go to our Father in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we come before you right now and ask, is there anything right now that's not correct between you and us? Lord, right now I, I thank you that you have forgiven my sins and the sins of these, my friends, your children. And also, Father, we look to our relationships with our fellow man. And if we have wronged anyone, we ask that they would forgive us and to show us that we might be able to make it right if possible. 
and for anyone who has wronged us, we ask that you, Father, would forgive them as right now we forgive them in our hearts. We also look up with humble gratitude for the gift you have given us, salvation through faith in your risen Son, Jesus, of Christ, Jesus the Christ. And finally, we ask to help us looking forward with how to share this gift with those around us and around the world. Now, Father, we ask that you would make this bread and this cup the body and blood of our Lord Jesus the Christ. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. And the, uh, the communion table is open to all. And Kenny will come up and help me, and you can come around and receive some of the bread from Kenny and the blood from me. And um, all are welcome. Please come and part, grab some, uh, get some of the body and blood and take it back to your seat and we will all partake together. Scripture encourages us that on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and he broke it and gave thanks and said, this is my body. Partake of this. Do this in remembrance of me. And afterwards, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for the sins of many. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you recall my death and resurrection until I come again. So if you, you can come by Kenny and partake of the body, and I will have the blood here. We will all take together when we return to our seats. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Do we have any prayer requests we'd like to lift up to our Heavenly Father this morning and this week? other than massive thanksgiving for all of the beautiful moisture.
Neoma and Neoma. I don't know the name, but there's a young person who um, was in an accident with a vehicle, teenager with two people on a motorcycle, killed one of them. I can't oh. imagine what that family, both families are going through. Okay, all family and friends, mm -hmm. everyone involved with the teenager motorcycle accident. Karen and peace and guidance and wisdom through the process of the cancer and what goes through with that. Joyful family reunion. Yeah. <clears throat> A phrase for Miranda O'Brien. She yes. was voted as Miss South Dakota last night. Yes. Miranda O'Brien praises and encouragement for her and her family as they adventure into the big world of being state. Uh, English is failing me on this one. See, there you go, ambassadors. It was an awesome, awesome blessing for her and her family. <clears throat> Let's lift these prayers up, prayers and praises up to our Heavenly Father this morning. <clears throat> and Father God, we just would like to give you thanks and praise and encouragement for Miranda and for her family. And we just thank you that she was nominated for as and awarded Miss South Dakota. And we just thank you for giving her the strength and wisdom to represent our state wisely and well, and for Martin, South Dakota to be represented, represented around everything that she will do. We just thank you for that. And Father, we also give you thanks and praise for safe cattle re relocation to summer grass, for everyone getting cow cows and calves out to summer grass. We thank you that it is happening finally and that it's happening safely for all, everyone on two legs and on four legs. Thank you for your guidance for each one involved, Father. And we give you giant thanks and praise for moisture, the beautiful moisture that is providing the life flowing from the ground that the cows and the calves will enjoy and that we can enjoy all the life flowing from the ground, Father. And we would also like to lift up and uh, lift up before you Aunt Naomi, Neoma, and we just ask for that her transition 
of laying aside the physical tent and coming to you will be peaceful for her. And just we ask for comfort and guidance for each of her family and friends in this time of saying, see you later in the physical life to uh, Neoma. And Father, we also lift up all those involved with the uh, motorcycle accident for the teenagers and ask for peace and comfort for the family and friends of those who lost the life and for just restoration and recovery for all who were involved in the accident and survived. And Father, we ask that, uh, that your glory and that your, your peace could flood over our friends who are having to go through the situation and the process of divorce and in any family insert uncertainties for anyone in our community and our families that your peace and your glory could be what is established through all the processes that we go through living our lives father and that your your love would flood every heart and mind involved and let them know that they are loved by you and that they can have a relationship with you father and we also would like to lift up Karen and just ask for your health and wellness and guidance for the doctors and the nurses involved in helping Karen deal with the cancer situation in her body. Just ask for peace and comfort for her and just for your grace to flood over Karen and her heart and her mind and all those who are helping her father. I just thank you for the health and wellness and healing for her and for everyone dealing with any big diseases that their bodies could have peace and health and wellness throughout this stage of their lives. <clears throat> and Father, we ask and thank you for safe travel for Kenny and Nancy coming home from Colorado. And we ask that they have had a fun family reunion time down there and that the stories they can bring back and the memories that they will hold and treasure will bring forward your glory and bring forward more praise and honor for you, Father. We thank you for all these blessings, and we also would like to lift up all of our medical personnel, our military, and our first responders, and ask that you would bless each one of them with safety and wisdom and guidance as they perform the services that they perform and provide for each one of us to live this life and enjoy this life. We lift up all of the uh, school people, the teachers and the children, and ask that they be having a safe, fun start to summer, and that all of them would be able to grow in their peace and their joy and their relationship with you over this summer, Father. We lift up Bob and Missy Barkley and ask for peace and provision for all their mission work in Paraguay. We lift up and just thank you for complete restoration of health and wellness to your standard for them, Father. For Mike Hicks, Wayne and Donna Bond, and John and Sheila Patel. We just thank you for the restoration for their bodies and for the wisdom and, gui wisdom and gu guidance from you for all of the doctors and nurses helping their bodies be recovered and restored. We just thank you for all these, your answers coming for all these prayers, Father, in your way and time, with, in Jesus' name, with the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace, friends. Have a blessed, peaceful week.
Brady, can you have a piece of